First, let's review the relevant anatomy. Ideally, you should be able to look at the surface of the head and visualize the underlying skull and muscle layers. The second and third branches of the trigeminal nerve run deep under the bone like this. You can see that the second branch, in particular, travels entirely within the bone. This image shows the area of effect, illustrated using dermatomes and osteotomes. The indications for trigeminal nerve block are summarized in this table. For preparation, you will need a block needle approximately 8 cm in length, a long-acting local anesthetic at a concentration of 0.2% to 0.375%, and a linear ultrasound probe. Place the ultrasound probe just below the zygomatic arch. The needle is inserted at the intersection of the posterior edge of the orbit and the upper border of the zygomatic arch. Next, let's try to understand the anatomy using a frontal view. You should be able to identify three important muscle layers, masseter, temporal, and lateral pterygoid muscles. You should also be able to see two important bony structures, zygomatic arch and lateral plate of the pterygoid process. Make sure to remember the names of the spaces involved in the procedure. Temporal fossa and infratemporal fossa. Place the probe just beneath the zygomatic arch to visualize the infratemporal fossa, and extend the view to include the lateral pterygoid plate. The needle should be advanced vertically from the temporal fossa, perpendicular to the skin. It is safest to contact the sphenoid bone within the temporal fossa. Next, gradually shallow the needle angle and walk the tip along the bone in small redirections. When you feel the needle drop off the first point of contact, advance further. At a depth of about 4 to 5 centimeters, you will contact the lateral pterygoid plate. This is an actual image of the needle insertion. The needle is inserted along the extended line of the palpebral fissure. A slight cephalad tilt of the probe often improves image quality. The insertion angle should be at least around 45 degrees, making it any shallower increases the risk of penetrating into the pharyngeal space. Now, let's begin with the pre-scan. Set the depth to 5 cm. The infratemporal fossa is clearly visualized all the way to the lateral plate of the pterygoid process at the deepest part. Needle insertion has begun, but the needle path is not visible at all. Advance the needle while confirming the tip position with saline injection, until it contacts the lateral pterygoid plate. Local anesthetic is injected now. You see the muscle layers being lifted by the spread of the solution. Let's watch the block on the opposite side in real time. Even in the same person, the visibility of the fossa can vary significantly between the left and right sides due to differences in the shape of the maxillary bones. Once you become familiar with the technique, the maxillary nerve block can be performed easily using the landmark method. Local anesthetic is injected now. An adequate effect can be achieved with a 5 ml injection. Okay, that's it. The third branch also cannot be visualized by ultrasound from the body surface. The inferior alveolar nerve block is performed, both visualization and needle insertion, from below the zygomatic arch at the mandibular notch. Place the probe just below the zygomatic arch, and insert the needle through the narrow space between the probe and the arch. The anatomy is almost the same as for the maxillary nerve block, but the target is visualized slightly more posteriorly, including the temporomandibular joint. In this block, the pterygomandibular space, one of the peripharyngeal spaces, is a key anatomical area. If the needle is directed caudally, it may advance toward the pharynx. Make sure to insert it perpendicular to the skin. Set the depth to 4 cm. Adjust the tilt while keeping the TMJ and PMS in mind. If the coronoid process obstructs the view, mouth opening can help.
The needle angle is steep, so inject small amounts of saline as needed to avoid losing sight of the needle tip. Inject the local anesthetic within the PMS. If that approach is difficult, an intramuscular injection into the lateral pterygoid muscle can be equally effective. Let's watch the block on the opposite side in real time. A large maxillary artery can be seen within the PMS. Be careful to avoid vascular injury. Here as well, a 5 ml injection provides a complete effect. Okay, that's it.